was a swell landing, Randy. You could sit down on a dime in a basket full of nickels. Yeah, I thought he was going to tail up there for a second. <laughs> so did I. Well, we've got about ten minutes to tie this baby down before that storm breaks. So that's the way the wind blows, is it? This is no time for petty jealousy. I'm surprised at you, Tommy. All right, all right. Only I don't need any church to fall on me. Scotch the wheels, will you, Tommy? Okay. All right, folks, everybody out. Hurry, please. Watch your step, miss. Say, if you're a pilot, I'm the hump on a camel's back. Thank you. Better to get that mate than not at all, young lady. Oh, thanks, Granny. <laughs> May I help you? You can hold Peter Pan, if you will, while I straighten my hat. Thank you. Come on, honey. Watch your step, please. Everything's all right. Now, everything's all right now, so don't get excited. Oh, I don't mind. I love excitement. <laughs> oh, may I take your bag? Oh, thank you. I took quite a jolt. Well, I'm sorry. This is not a regular landing field, you know. Don't misunderstand me, my boy. I'm not finding fault. <laughs> Neither am I. But when I lit with my chin and the back of that chair popped me on the jaw, I almost took the count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try and do better the next time. Oh, you're done pretty good. I'm glad we're on terracotta again, oh, anyhow. Terra firma, my dear boy. Okay, Professor. Anyhow, I'm glad we're on terracotta, not wandering on up there in that bowl of soup. <laughs> I'll say. Where are we, Captain? About 300 miles east of Los Angeles. Oh. What? Oh. Well, I got the wheels all blocked. Okay, Tommy, while I tell the folks what it's all about, you get the stakes, ropes, and clamps, and we'll tie her down. Okay. I'll help you, Tommy. How about their luggage? Are you... any of you folks want your grips? We might be here all night. Oh, all night? All night. Oh, well, we can't do that. We we can't stay here all night. Well, there's a house right over there. Well, whose is it? Well, your guess is just as good as mine, Mr. Hartley. But will they allow us to stay there? Well, the only way we can find out is by asking. Oh, but it's important that I get to Los Angeles tonight. Yes, but it's more important you get there alive. Oh, but don't well, you we'll understand, Captain? Captain? I don't now, get no, Just a minute. Now, listen, folks. I sat our ship down here because the radio reports warn us that there's a hundred-mile gale sweeping eastward through the San Gorgonian Pass. And the nearest emergency field on the other side of the range, and we'd never have made it. I didn't want to turn back to 21. There's no use chanting it in this fog. Now, this is just a spot to land on, and that's all. And we're lucky we found it. What right have you to dump us down here in the middle of nowhere and then calmly inform us that we'll be here all night? I think it's positively silly. Oh, well, don't be ridiculous, young lady. This man was only thinking of our lives. I'm due to open a show tomorrow night in Frisco. I'll be a wreck. If he hadn't landed us here when he did, we'd have all been wrecked. I heartily approve of your decision, Captain. And so do I, young man. Oh, attend to your knitting, will you? My knitting. My knitting! Has anybody seen my knitting? Please. Well, if we have to stay here all night, your father will arrive in Los Angeles ahead of us, and that will throw a monkey wrench into our plans. You got it all tied down, Tommy? Okay. Come on, everybody. We'll have to make a run for it. All right, everybody, are we all here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm here. Ten. It's all right. Eleven. You're twelve. And I seem to be thirteen. Thirteen? Good night. What's good about it? Huh? Oh. Anyone try the lights? I tried the lights, Captain. The current is off. Well, the doorbell rang. It's on batteries, I guess. There's probably be a generating system in the cellar. 
Come on, Tommy, let's see. Need any help? No, thanks. It's just a simple matter. Let's go, Tommy. Right, coming. Ah, oh, here she is, Tommy. You're right again. Looks like it hadn't been used for some time. Well, we're in luck. We have gas anyway. Hey, throw in that switch, Tommy. There you are, boy. Yeah, there you are. Hey, wait a minute. Come on, out with it. You've had a grouch on ever since we've left Albuquerque. Well, a fine friend you turned out to be. Now, what do you mean by that? You know very well what I mean. The idea of you walking off with Ruth last night and leaving me flat. Well, we waited for you for a whole hour. Well, my watch was slow. Yeah, you were in that joint shooting crap. Well, that's my business. Now, you've stood Ruth up on three or four dates. Is it a crime because I take it to a movie when you don't show? And I suppose you're all broken up about it, too. No, oh, you act like a little schoolboy. If I did the right thing, I'd turn you across my lap and give you a darn good spanking. If you did the right thing, you'd stop chiseling. Hi, down there. How about some light? Aren't you getting any up there? No, it's darker than the black hole of Calcutta. That's the fuse, probably. Yep, here it is. Well, okay. folks, here we are. But where are we? Huh? Oh, well, we may as well make ourselves at home. I don't like this delay. Hello, condensed soup. Hey, Tommy, bring it upstairs. We'll feed our wandering sheep. What's the matter with him? Is he paralyzed? If you think I admire you for acting like this, you're mistaken. Hey, wait a minute. Give me that. Now listen, Ruth, I don't want... I'm in no mood to talk, and neither are you. Well, this is some dump they got here. I beg your pardon. Well, you know, a swell layout. Oriental rugs and everything. Well, I'd trade it all for a good bowl of chop suey. You know, chop suey was really invented by an Irishman. I'm quite certain of it, madame. Miss... Uh, Miss Prudence Daggett. Senor Lin, Miss Daggett, at your service. Thank you. Then remove this cover. Anything I can do? Well, we might as well make ourselves comfortable. Why don't you take all the covers off the furniture? Sure. I tell you, Professor, in the eyes of the law, we are housebreakers. No more, no less. Well, from a purely legal standpoint, yes. But from a humanitarian viewpoint, no. I have no doubt that the owner of this mansion would welcome our presence here, were he acquainted with our predicament. Well, it's lucky that I'm not the owner. I'd throw us all out. Why, Floyd, you do no such thing. You'd tell us to make ourselves comfortable and serve coffee and sandwiches. Well, I can't guarantee you all that, but I found some soup in the kitchen. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye vote for that too, Captain. Well, that's fine. Now then, who will help? I will. No, you won't. I will. You sit right down and rest. I'll help him. Thank you, dear. That's sweet of you. Coming, Floyd? No. Too many cooks spoil the broth. Captain? Yes, sir? Uh, don't you think we're going a trifle too far? After all, my boy, we're uninvited guests, you know. Oh, tush, tush, your reverence. If that's all that's worrying you, why, we can take up a collection and leave it with a note of thanks. The Lord would understand if he owned this house, and whoever owns this house is one of the Lord's children. I hope. Let us trust that he is. You know, that collection is a good idea. Thanks, Granny. I'm full of good ideas. Well, Reverend, what do you say? Do we sip soup or wish we had? I dare say the Lord will understand. Well, do we start? Come on, dear. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll light a fire. It's a bit chilly. All right, Captain. Need any help? No. You know, that pilot had one swell idea when he mentioned soup. 
It reminded me of one time when I was in training. Really? Contract? Uh, thank heaven. Where did you get the cards? Oh, I always carry them. And this too. Peanut brittle? No, thanks. Peanut brittle? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, uh, peanut brittle? Why, thanks. I haven't had any of this stuff since I was a kid. Yeah. Peanut brittle? Thank you, no. Uh, say, Hartley, the way you handled Gibbs in that Blandon expose was a brilliant example of criminal defense. Oh, you followed the case? Yes, very closely. I've been interested in law for many years, criminal cases especially. An odd hobby for a professor of mathematics. But no stranger than mine, but a plain businessman. What is this strange hobby of yours, Mr. Ford? Renaissance miniatures. Rather expensive, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't indulge it. <laughs> uh, diamond. Spade. Pass. Well, let me see. I don't know exactly what to do. Five clubs. Bank for game, huh? I'll double five clubs just on general principles. Uh, pass. Pass. Hard, huh? Just our book. Mind if I look on? Certainly not. Would you care to play? Oh, no. Contract's one of the veiled mysteries as far as I'm concerned. Mm, there are a lot of people in the same fix, Miss Van Buren. Professor, no diamonds? No. All clubs. Well, you played it and made it. I, I didn't think you had a chance. <laughs> May I have a cigarette? Surely. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's been dropped before. Never mind. Now don't forget, Hartley, that that club was doubled. Mm, I've got it now. Uh, uh. Got a match? Yes. You're running up quite a score, Hartley. Eh? We haven't started yet, this way. <laughs> ah, there you are. Well, sit down. Thank you. You're a prize fighter, aren't you? I was, lady, was. But I saved my pile and quit two years ago. Hmm. Ever been knocked out? Me? Knocked out? <laughs> Why, listen, lady, you could hammer on that thing for two days, and I'd never feel a thing. Really? That's a fact. I saw you cold on the mat for two minutes when you fought Sweeney. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, with that, well, uh, that was an accident. The cleanest, sweetest accident I ever saw. Huh? Oh. That's the best I can do for you, partner. Thank you, partner. Excuse me, please. Yes? Dummy, Miss Van Buren. I'm sorry. Well, I made it, partner. Oh, fine. I I didn't know whether you could or not. Mr. Buchanan, will you remove that fire screen? It's getting cold in here. Oh, sure. It's its old age creeping on. 
Yeah. <laughs> My, they're slow with that soup, aren't they? By golly, that's right. Gee, I'm so hungry, my stomach thinks my throat's cut. Maybe I better go see what's holding them up. Do, will you? Sure. I smell biscuits. Hi, fella. Say, are you a magician? We found a package of ready mixed biscuit flour and some condensed milk, if you call that magic. <laughs> is that soup or is that soup? <laughs> Everything will be ready in just a minute, old man. Need any help? Yes, you can help, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Randy. You can help get the dishes. We'll eat in here. Right on. Come on, folks. The chief cook and bottle washer says she wants some dishes. Dinner plate, soup plate, spoons, and napkins. Right on. Say, how long have you been married? Why, well, I'm not married. What made you think I was married? Well, aren't you? Not yet. Oh, you're going to be, is that it? To Mr. Martin, if our luck holds out. We're eloping. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad? Well, for me, first I think you're married and resign myself to a cruel trick of fate. Oh, the biscuits. The biscuits. Mmm, mm. how's that? I knew it, I knew it. Here all these years I've waited for a girl who could make biscuits and when she comes along, she's engaged. Hi ho. A heart bowed down. It's a cold, cruel world, my friend. Hey, you think I'm kidding? Don't tell me you're not. Here, you poor heartbroken boy. This will make you feel better. What was that? Perhaps we'd better investigate. Let's see what it was. We've been hit! Over here by the arch. Are you all right? Yes, are you? Yes, stay where you are. I'll oh. find you. Keep calm, keep calm, everybody. We just blew out a fuse. We'll have light again in a second. Miss Daggett, Miss Daggett, where are you? Here I am. Oh, I wish I'd taken a train. Tommy, where's that flashlight? I think it's in the kitchen. Hey, fella, need any help? No, thanks. Must have hit a window. I'm in my glass breaking on me. Not yet. Any trouble? I must have gotten hold of a blown out fuse. Need any help? No, it's okay now. Well, just a door slamming. Calm yourselves, ladies. Calm yourselves. Floyd, something touched my arm. Be quiet, Doris. It's just the wind. Now don't let yourself get excited. If we were in Kansas, I would say this was a cyclone. Oh, quite a storm. I've never seen a worse one. Now, aren't you glad you're not up in the air? <laughs> how I'm glad. Well, now that that's over, how about the eats? Well, everything's all ready. Just wait at the kitchen, folks. After you, madam. Miss, please, your reverence. <laughs> Miss Prudence Daggett. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Quite a character, that dear little lady. Indeed. After you, please. 
thank you. Well, I... Now, just a minute. Why, well, what's the matter, Professor? Where's Mr. Forbes? What? Why, well, he was here just a moment ago. Well, I know that. Say, what's all the excitement? Forbes! Forbes! You, Preston, see if he's in the kitchen. Hey, how are you ordering? Now, don't right? talk, but do as I tell you. Do as he tells you, Tommy. See here, sir. Now, uh, just a minute, Hartley. Forbes! Forbes! Where are you? Come, come, Professor. Don't you think some explanation is in order? All in due course, Mr. Hartley. The important thing now is to locate Mr. Forbes. Yes, but... Uh, well, he ain't going very far in this storm. Seems to me you're trying to make a mountain out of an anthill. Oh. Was he there, Tommy? Of course not. I could have told him that if he'd want to listen for a second. Yes, what could you have told me? That four of us were standing there in that arch. Anybody going into the kitchen would have had to walk through us. That's what. That's right, Professor. I think you better tell them what we know, Mr. McGinnis. McGinnis? McGinnis? Why? Keep quiet, Captain. I'll do all the talking. Say, first you're Professor Marmont, then you're McGinnis. Now, what's this all about? Yeah, now, let us in on this, will you? That door! It's opening! Forbes! Forbes! What? Yes. Randall. It's gone. Yes. We'd better get him upstairs and hurry too. Hey, give us a hand, will you, fellows? Yes. Sure. Preston, keep your eye on that door. Do you understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, pull yourself oh, together, young woman. Goodness. Pull yourself together. Oh, oh, oh. You look a sensible kind of woman. Take care of these girls. Oh, oh, take them into the living room. Certainly. Uh, come, ladies. You go along. Oh, Martin, yes. there's a phone in the alcove next to the living room. See if it's connected. Find out where we are and get the operator to put you in touch with the doctor. Now hurry. All right. Get some water, man. In the kitchen. Hurry. What is it, Preston? Sounds like someone in this room. Murderers don't advertise their presence. Then Forbes is dead. Hit on the head with some heavy object. Basal fracture of the skull. Cerebral hemorrhage. Never again consciousness. That crash we heard. The wind blowing this branch through that window. That explains it. It explains more than that. The reason that Forbes had wet sand in his hair and the back of his collar. Whoever hit him with this had the strength of an ox. Come on. Did you find anything? This. Well, I'll explain that later, Professor. All right, where she was. Blown through the window. Is he dead? Yes. What about the phone? It's disconnected. Hmm. All right, folks, sit down. We'll have a little talk. Now, 
I'll come to the point. My name is not Marmont, it's McGuinness. I am not a professor of mathematics, but a special agent in the employer of the company which insured $500,000 worth of diamonds, which Mr. Forbes was to have delivered to Mayor Seal and Mayor of Los Angeles. Mr. Forbes is dead, and the gems are missing. Therefore, it appears that someone in this group is a thief, as well as a murderer. That person clubbed him to death with this. I dare say you have credentials to prove your assertion. Most certainly. I expected you to ask that, Mr. Hartley. No offense intended, you understand. Quite all right. You've made rather a serious accusation. Circumstances warrant it. Did anyone else know this consignment? I did. Huh? What? You knew? Yes. Mr. McGinnis told me about it at Albuquerque. He thought I should know, in order that I might take due precautions. Mm-hmm, I see. Anyone else? No, not that I know of. May I see this? Why, certainly. You won't find any fingerprints on it, if that's what you're looking for. I wasn't looking for fingerprints, my dear fellow. Then what? By a process of elimination, I believe that we might arrive at a conclusion. Conclusions don't count. Conclusions often lead to a conviction. All right, Mr. Hartley, when you get through, let me know. Yeah, I shall. Let me see. How are the gems carried? A chamois bag. How many were there? Forty-seven. Five hundred thousand dollars for forty-seven diamonds. For the large stones, what? They were all pure white and perfectly matched. By a process of elimination, we can dispose of the ladies, I believe. <laughs> they were chattering like magpies during the entire time the lights were out. And besides, none of them seems capable of strong-arming anyone or using this. Uh, you wouldn't say. Well, that sounds reasonable. Uh, the captain here, he was in the cellar, so we can dispose of him. Yes, but the captain may have been in collusion with the thief, for all you know. What do you mean by that, my dear? Uh, come, come, Captain. Let's not go off half cock. Admitting that there's a possibility the captain may nevertheless have been in the cellar, I suggest that the rest of us be searched, uh, including yourself. Certainly. I was just about to propose that myself. Well, you can start with me. Me too. I want to find a bed somewhere and get yes. some sleep. I shall submit to the indignity. I have no objection. How about you, Mr. Buchanan? Nothing doing. There ain't nobody searching me, see? You force us to a regrettable conclusion. Conclusions don't prove nothing. But you're practically admitting your guilt, Buchanan. Guilt my eye. I was in the hall all the time and you know it. If you have nothing to conceal, you have nothing to fear. I know my rights. This ain't no court. And there ain't nobody searching me, see? That's final. Oh, quit your stalling, Buchanan. Lay your hands on me and I'll knock you cold. Don't do it, Mr. Buchanan. I've got the diamonds. What? what? Where did you get these? In my knitting bag. I have no idea how it got there. <laughs> <laughs> In your knitting bag. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I look at one of those. Well, I guess so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a joke. <laughs> the joke's on false. If he thought he was carrying diamonds, well, these things are paste. What? Paste? paste? Not Why, paste are crazy. Phonies. Rock crystal. <laughs> Worth about uh, $5 a piece. If you don't think so, look at this. <laughs> you see, it won't even scratch glass. <laughs> well, I'll be... I know but very little about these things, but I agree with you, Mr. Hartley. They do lack brilliancy. Well, I'm darned if I don't think you're right. Well, what do you mean? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, now, that was a nice thing. Somebody was on the that morning. Well? 
What do you make of it, my dear Watson? Somebody thought these things were real. Discovering they were paste, ditched them. There's a man dead out there on account of these things. As far as I see it, Hartley, it's nothing to joke about. Only McGinnis. You're quite right. Well, what next? Say, Buchanan, why were you so anxious not to get searched? Huh? Oh. Well, if you want to know, I had some picture poach cards in my pocket that ain't nobody else's business but mine, see? Mr. Buchanan. <laughs> well, he asked, so I told him. <laughs> Just a minute. Where are you going? I'm in the kitchen to get some meat. I'm with you on that. Come on, Doris. Nobody's going to leave this room. Well, just a second, old man. Mr. Buchanan pointed out we're not on trial. It's not likely that any of us will try to escape in such a storm. Now, I suggest that you calm down. And while you do so, we'll all have something to eat. Afterward, if you wish, we can talk as much as you want to. Meantime, the ladies are tired. And some of us are hungry. Only for you, Hartley. Let's see. Why is it that you're so anxious to eat all of a sudden? My privilege. All right, Captain. Will you escort us to the kitchen? Gladly. <laughs> all right, everybody. This way. Come along, dearie. Have a little bath over the fire. Excuse me, gentlemen. You don't have any more? No, thank you. Won't you have some more soup, Mr. Martin? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, I don't care much for canned things. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, that is true. That's right. Oh, boy, I have my third bowl. <laughs> oh, Ruth. Yes, what is it? Well, I'm sorry the way I acted. Well, you ought to be. Well, I am. Keep that up and you'll be in the doghouse again. Well, I most always am anyway. Only when that jealous disposition of yours gets the better of you. Ah, oh, Tommy, don't do it again. All right, I'll be good. Have you apologized to Andy yet? Yeah, just a minute ago. He seems to be doing all right, doesn't he? Yes. Leave it to Randy. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he does, does he? Tommy! All right. Oh! Oh, it's you. Not so loud. I thought you'd come. Who the devil are you? Monica Van Buren. What did you mean by what you wrote on that card? You don't know? No, I don't. Then I'll tell you. Oh! 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 Miss Dagger, are you ill? I guess it's a little... a little close in here. Would you help me into the other room? Why, certainly. Need any help? No, thank you. I guess I'm just getting on. Come along, dearie. All right. Well, 
That's a lie. I was never married to Millicent Dorn. You can't get away with that. Not with me. Millicent and I were on the road together the year after you ditched her and the kids. She showed me your picture and told me the whole rotten story. Where is she now? In New York, working in a burlesque show for twenty-two fifty a week. What do you want? You're going to tell that kid the elopement's off. You're crazy. Why, that girl's worth a fortune. Take your choice. Either you tell her or I will. That won't be necessary, Miss Van Buren. Here's your ring, Floyd. I'm glad I found out in time. Damn you. Thank you. That's all right, kid. I didn't want to see you get a raw deal. I appreciate what you've done very much. Forget it. Well, now that that's over, I guess I'll get some soup. Excuse me? You're all right. You're telling me? Well, aren't you going to cry? No, I think not. He isn't worth it. Don't mind me. I've cried a few times in my life. It helps. Miss Daggett. Yes, dearie. You weren't really ill, were you? Never been sick a day in my life. Then you knew. Better you found out now than later. You're a dear. You know, Miss Daggett, it's the funniest thing. Why, I don't seem to be suffering at all. That pilot chap's a handsome devil, isn't he? Which one? You know the one I mean, young lady. Now run along. Maybe I had better go and help him. <laughs> Baggett. Thank you, Mr. Ling. It is my pleasure to serve you. Miss Daggett, won't you join us? Thank you. You don't mind? Not in the least. I heard them all preparing to leave the kitchen. I thought you too might want to know. Say, Granny, you're all right. In the words of Miss Van Buren, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Talk now? Oh, Tommy! Right here, dear. Now, what's the matter? Where was Moses when the light went out? Hey, Gordon! Fix that fuse again, will you? Okay, I'll be right with you. You two sit right here. I'll only take a minute. Now, this way, Miss Van Buren. Uh, don't stumble. What a night this turned out to be. Is that you, Gordon? Yep. Well, make it snappy, will you? Okay.
Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's only me. Oh, excuse me, Ruth. Ruth, give me your hand. That's my hand you're holding, Miss Ruth. Oh. Where's that darn cellar door? Oh, Mike, where is it? Ouch! I'm sorry, lady. Oh, I'm used to it by now. This place is giving me the jitters. Hey, Tommy, give me a match. I'm all out. I haven't got any. Here's one. Thanks. Ah, here it is. Need any help? No, if I do, I'll yell. Okay, boy. down them stairs, somebody popped me. Well, what do you mean? Just that. When the lights went out, somebody sneaked up behind me and a strong arm in. Dragged me back into this passage and... McGinnis! McGinnis! So what's the matter? I've been robbed. Robbed? Oh, what? Robbed? No. Of what? A five hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds, that's what. Diamonds? What the devil are you talking about? I'll tell you what, and I'll tell everybody else in this outfit. Somebody here's a dirty, slugging, double-cross and top it. Now, calmly, Buchanan, if you can. Tell me just what you're talking about. Well, ain't that what I'm trying to do? I'm standing in that passageway to the kitchen when somebody strong-arms me. I try to yell, but he's got my gullet plug, and all I can do is make a squawking sound. Then I let loose and takes a crack at him, but only lands a glancing blow on his jaw. Then bongo! He clunks me on the back of the head and steals the real diamonds out of my pocket. The real diamonds? Yeah, the real diamonds. Button, button. Who's got the button? All right, Martin. Now, let me get this straight. You say you were carrying the real diamonds? Yeah, I was. I don't know anything about that junk Forbes was carrying. I never even heard of the guy before or seen him until he got on the plane at Chicago. The company didn't trust him, I guess, because unbeknownst to you or you either, buddy, I was carrying the real goods, see? Somebody in this room's got them. And I'm going to get them back if I have to tear everybody to pieces to do it. Oh, none of that, no. Keep your hands off me. I don't trust you anymore and I do the rest of them. Where's that slant-eyed chink? Who are you speaking of me, sir? Yeah, I'm speaking to you, sir. Where have you been? Where were you when somebody caught me on the bean out there? There you are. Look at it. Look at that scratch. That's where I slugged him one. I shall answer any question you may care to ask me, Mr. McInnes. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll just... Oh, hold him there. there. Oh, there. I just let go. Come on, now. What'd you do with them diamonds? Mr. McInnes, Cut it, will you? you? I know how to handle this case. Yeah, like you did Forbes up there. He's dead, and it's lucky I ain't. Oh, sit down. Sit down, everybody. Now, as Mr. Hartley would say, we'll see if we can't reach a few conclusions. Someone in this group is a murderer and a thief. We know all that. Get down the cases. And as I started to say, 
We're going to find out which one of us it is. Gone, get gone. Well? Not a thing, old man, not a thing. As you were saying, some one of us is a murderer and a thief. I question your right to the assertion as a fact. What? Look at this. Proceed. Proceed. A conclusion, old man. Merely a conclusion. And conclusions sometimes lead to convictions. Your trick. Thanks. Now I have here something found in the room where Mr. Forbes met his death. An object by its own peculiar nature. We must necessarily, and by a simple elementary deduction, associate with Mr. Ling. There you are. What did I tell you? What, Mr. Ling? Why? Why the... This is yours, Ling? No. Come on, you. Quit stalling. Remove your hand. Stop it, Buchanan. Well, you didn't expect him to admit it was his, did you? I know that it is yours, Ling, because... I saw you with it in the plane about an hour after we left Albuquerque. Ah. On that you base your conclusion? On that I base my conclusion. Now, just a minute, old man. As you so aptly observed, conclusions are often wrong. Now, see here. Now, my dear fellow, you're wrong. All wrong. Oh, yeah? I suppose you're going to try and prove it belongs to somebody else. Mm, I'm afraid I must. Because it does, really. It belongs to me. To you? To me. Mr. Ling, Mr. Forbes and I were discussing Chinese art. During the course of the evening, Mr. Ling commented on the ivory as a perfect example of Nitschke carving. As Mr. Forbes admired it greatly, I, I presented it to him with my compliments. Mr. Forbes is not here to corroborate that statement. Ah, but Mr. Ling is. <laughs> Your trick, Mr. Hartley. Uh, thanks, Mr. McGuinness. Well, Ling, what about it? Did Hartley give this thing to Forbes? I did not see him do so but I'm quite willing to credit his assertion that he did. Hey, what's that ring? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Your trick, Mr. McGuinness. Thanks. Aren't you going to question Mr. Ling about his uh, wound? That too requires explanation. Sorry. I believe it was so. I'll cut this Alphonse and gas and stuff and get down to cases. Oh, shut up, Buchanan. Buchanan says he slugged someone on the cheek. Yeah, with my ring, see? Look at that scratch on his face. Where were you? I heard talking in the hall. Shortly afterwards, someone entered from the connecting passage. Whoever it was heard me move an alarm. Down me a bro, cause unconsciousness. Ah, that's a lot of baba. Uh, have you any idea just whom this may have been? If you will permit me to proceed in my own way, I may be able to answer Mr. Hartley's most pertinent question. Shoot. Thank you. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Miss Taggart.
พาไปไหมพาไปมีอ f I i n t r u d e for a moment into your field, Mr. m c g i n n i s I trust you understand that it is only with a desire to be of assistance. Based on the premise that the thief will not keep the diamond on his person. Thank you. That the person who passed through the alcove also passed through this room. That's right. Someone did. We heard him, didn't we? Thank you, Miss Daggett. And then on into the hall. Present day when the lights came on. Well, that sounds well enough. But your bird of passage could have more easily been you than anyone else. But your bird of passage left a trail. The scent of lavender. And. Perhaps Dr. w i n g e t might be able to assist you. Why, this is preposterous! That one of the cloth, uh, Mr. McGinnis, are you going to permit this insinuation? Uh, we have only your word that you detected the odor of lavender from this mysterious person, whom, as you say, passed through the alcove and into this room. Ah, he's just trying to hang on to the dock. That's all. Come on now, no more stalling. We know you took him. Where'd you hide him? Uh, one moment, Buchanan. McGinnis, may I ask Ling a few questions? I'll ask a few myself, Hartley. We're going round in circles like a dog chasing its tail. Uh, diamonds, old man. Diamonds. Oh, don't forget, Hartley. We have only your word for it that you gave Forbes that ivory. By Jove, I've forgotten. <laughs> I'm still a suspect. You're in just as tough a spot as Ling. Here they are. What? Huh? Why, where did you get those from, l o n g e e t h a t you are. Bring them here, Grandma. Say you can't get away with that one, get? Oh, can't I? Don't try it, Buchanan. I warn you. Come on, Grandma. I'm in a hurry. Him to marry us. Right. 